Don't move to Richmond, Virginia unless you can handle these five things. This is my part two to that first video titled the same thing. Now, I gotta say it was really hard trying to come up with another five reasons why somebody shouldn't move to Richmond, Virginia, but I dug really hard and I came up with another five. My name is Ron DeSanto. I'm a real estate agent here in Richmond, Virginia. And if you're thinking about moving here, I help people relocate to Richmond from all over the country. And I'd love to go home shopping with you. So don't hesitate to pick up the phone, give me a call. I'll throw my number right here for you. So let's dive right into it and start with reason number one. So I don't wanna spook anybody with the first reason on my list here, because overall I feel Richmond, Virginia is a safe city. But there are areas that could be a little spotty. So with that, let's talk about crime. Crime could be somewhat of an issue here, especially if you're moving to Richmond, Virginia, and you're determined to live in the city. You wanna be downtown, you wanna be in the fan, uh, carry town. It can be tricky because things change from block to block. Now you can see here um, from this map that most of the reported crime is happening in and around the city limits, mostly within the city of Richmond. And when you go north of the river, it gets a little tricky because it changes from block to block. And you could have a nice area with million dollar townhomes, you go a few blocks up and things completely change. So again, if you're gonna be living in the city, you wanna, you wanna just kinda know you're working with someone who understands the ins and outs of, you know, those areas. Now, uh, if you're north of the river, I would say it's a little bit more splotchy than it is in South Richmond, because when you're in South Richmond, below the river, they call that Area 50, it's pretty much uniformly the same, um, except when you get closer to the river and further closer to the city, it gets a little bit more expensive. But overall, you know, Area 50 is going to be uniformly the same when it comes to reported crimes. But when you're north of the river, uh, I, I could have added a lot more circles to this chart, but I didn't want to go crazy. But there are areas that are just, you know, a few blocks up, like Churchill, for example. If you're close to West Broad Street in Churchill, you could be paying a million dollars for a townhome. You go up to North Churchill, uh, Venable Street, or uh, um, uh, what is it, uh, Walnut Hill up there, you could find a, an abandoned board, boarded up house for two, three hundred thousand dollars. It's a real fixer upper. And uh, you're not really going to find that in Churchill anymore. Everything's been um, revitalized and, and, and kind of brought up in value. So it could be really splotchy out there. I don't want to spend too much time on this because that's not what this video is really about. But just knowing where you want to live, and especially if you want to live in the city, you got to know what's going on there. Now, I just put prices here to give you an idea of what houses sell for in Area 50 below south of the river. And you're going to be you know in and around $300,000, a little bit more, a little bit less for a single family detached home. So just to give you an idea of prices. And again, uh, prices can vary by a lot um, when you go north of the river. So here are some dangerous areas in Richmond. So you could just pause this and look at it. And here are crime rates in other cities that are kind of similar in size to Richmond. So you can see Richmond's not that bad. A lot of cities are worse off than us. Orlando, Cincinnati, Knoxville, Birmingham. You know, we're doing better than them, so it's not that bad here. Um, now I'm just having fun with the data. Uh, <laughs> I did Maryland because I watched the TV show The Wire. <laughs> and uh, Baltimore, Maryland is notoriously dangerous. I guess some spots are great, some spots are not, just like in Richmond. So we're doing a lot better than Baltimore, Maryland. And I included Washington, D.C. because according to Redfin's migration tool, 50% uh, of the people that are moving to Richmond, Virginia from out of state are coming from Washington, D.C. So you might be from D.C. if you're watching this video right now. Chances are you might be. And Fort Lauderdale, because why not? I like Florida. So the second, number two reason why you might want to consider moving to Richmond, Virginia, is the heat and humidity. Or reconsider, I should have said. So here is a chart of all of the days that are above 90 degrees here. So those hot, hot days, as compared to Florida. So why did I choose Florida? Because Florida is notoriously hot and humid what better state to use as a comparison. So in Florida, you can see it's about the same as Richmond. It actually looks a little bit hotter in Richmond, Virginia. And the hot months here are really gonna be July and August. It could get sweltering hot here. Um, and you'll have, you could have like a week or two of 
you know, over 100 degree weather. Uh, it's not unusual. But I will say those crazy, crazy hot days are very short lived. So just hang in there for a couple of weeks and it'll be over. Here's a chart of the average temperatures, not the ones just above 90, the average temperatures as compared to Florida. And you can see again, July and August were on par with Florida, but months outside of July and August are cooler than Florida. And by a lot, really, especially in the winter. So it's not that bad here, but it can be hot. And here's some more data just giving you overall uh, numbers. Snowfall. Um, we get it 11 inches of snow a year. Well, not lately. The past couple of years, I haven't really seen any snow. Um, but we do have strong snowstorms run through, and you can get a foot of snow sometimes. So, you know, you can expect snow. But if you forget your snow shovel, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. The number three reason why you might want to reconsider moving to Richmond, Virginia is the public transportation. It's not that great. Here's the bus line, and here's where the buses run. So the best bus service you're going to see is in the city, downtown area and outside. It spills out into the surrounding counties of Chesterfield and Rico. You do have bus lines going out that way, but it's not as robust as within the city limits. So here's another uh, close-up of the downtown area. And you can see all well, more than the downtown, just kind of like all of the city of Richmond. But um, yeah, bus service is limited. And here are some areas where um, bus service is good. This is just an illustration of it where it's good and where it's limited. And here's your number four reason why you might want to reconsider moving to Richmond, Virginia. And that is it's a strong seller's market here right now. Now, it's been a strong seller's market here for quite a while, uh, for the past few years, really. Um, they haven't been building homes over the past 10 years like they, they used to, uh, which, you know, since the whole mortgage crisis in 2008, 2009, builders haven't been building at the same pace, and we're really starting to see that, but that's nationwide. But here in Richmond in particular, home prices right now are higher than they've ever been. And I know so many counties, so many cities around the country are not seeing the kind of, you know, price rises we're seeing here. But you can see in blue, that prices here are really elevated. And over here is just months of inventory, just showing how fast things move off the market, which is right now at an all time high. Things are selling very quickly here. So if you're thinking about moving here, you know, you might have a problem trying to buy a home. And this right here is that thumbnail uh, for that video I was going to link at the end. It basically covers the um, housing market here. It's my market update from last week, but it's very informative. And like I said, I'll put a, a, a link to it at the end of this video so you can watch that. The number fifth reason why you might want to reconsider moving to Richmond, Virginia is because if you're not financially strong, you won't be able or you might not be able to write a strong offer. Now, to get a house right now, you have to put together an offer that you might not be comfortable with. And I know a lot of people are not comfortable with some of the things that you might need to do, like pay over asking for a home. And I know that's just common knowledge in this hot market. Everybody knows you got to pay over asking. But sometimes over asking doesn't get it. You got to be prepared to do things like waiving contingencies. Um, I don't like waiving home inspections, but there are ways around that where you can get a home inspector to kind of, um, I got a guy, he does it at a discount where he's not doing a full report, but he's running through it, making sure all of the major things are okay. This way you can write an offer and not have a, a, a home contingency attached to it because that will strengthen your offer by a lot uh, by not wanting a home inspection. Also be prepared because what's pretty popular here in Richmond, Virginia lately is a lot of home sellers are asking for possession by seller after closing. Um, for short, we call it a lease back which basically means that after you close on the house, the seller will still possess the home, live in the home for a month, two months, sometimes three months, and you might not want to charge them rent. Let them live there rent-free to strengthen your offer because once they sell their home, they're now in this buyer's market just like you are, and they're going to have to buy a home, and it could take them months, and they're going to face all the same things you might be facing. So they want to make sure that they have time to find a home, so they're going to ask you to let them stay in their home for a few months while they, you know, do their own home search. So it's pretty common. And another thing, and this is where you need to be financially strong, is appraisal gaps. Now, sometimes you pay over asking. I wrote an offer 
last week for my buyers and we went $26,000 over asking on a house that was listed for three fifty nine, dollars and we did not get it. We were outbid. Um, but one of the things we didn't do because my buyers couldn't financially um, do that was to make up any shortfall in appraisal by bringing extra cash to the table. Basically what that means is if the appraiser the bank sends out says that the home is not worth what the contract price is, then people usually renegotiate the contract price and bring it down to whatever the appraisal is. So if it appraised for 360 and you offered 400, then there's a $40,000 difference there. Well, an appraisal gap reassurance is something you put on the contract that allows the the um, seller to be reassured he's going to get the contract price, which means the buyer's going to have to bring more money and make up the difference. So again, you have to be financially strong to do something like that. And um, another thing is make sure you're working with an agent who is going to be a good communicator with the other side. So um, I'm getting away from really <laughs> five reasons why you shouldn't. But anyway, um, this is writing an offer class now. But uh, you always want to stay. Uh, you always want to stay in touch with the listing agent. A lot of agents sometimes submit offers and they don't call the agents. They just submit it and wait for a phone call uh, to say either your offer was accepted or rejected. I'm just saying that you have to stay on top of them. Um, constantly call them. And if your uh, buyer's contract is currently not on top of the list, you want to find out quickly and know why and give your buyer a chance to readjust their offer to put that contract back on the top of the list again. And that takes a lot of communication. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of buyers don't understand that. They think you just submit the offer, you submit the bid, and then you just wait. No, there's a lot of hustle that goes along with that and you need to know it. And right over here, you're going to find that video I was telling you about, the market update from last week. It's very informative and lets you know why the market's going crazy here in Richmond right now. And if you got any use out of this video, please like it. It helps me in more ways than you know. And if you're thinking about moving here, don't hesitate to pick up the phone, give me a call. Thanks for sticking around to the end. My name is Ron DeSanto. Have a great day. Bye.